И мы снова в эфире, и мы продолжаем третий поток конференции Snow One. Наш следующий спикер – Отавио Сантана. Отавио тоже Java-чемпион, у нас прямо чемпионский поток. Кроме того, он увлеченный инженер-программист, специализирующийся на облачных технологиях и технологиях Java. Он имеет опыт в создании высокопроизводительных гетерогенных приложений в области финансов, социальных сетей и электронной коммерции. Отавио также является членом экспертных групп, лидером экспертов в нескольких GSR и исполнителем комитета JCP. Он работает над несколькими проектами в Apache Eclipse Foundations, например, Apache Tamaya, Microprofile, Jakarta EE. И в Jakarta EE он возглавляет первую спецификацию по Jakarta NoSQL. Также он регулярно участвует на конференциях Java One и Devox. Встречайте! Hello, Otavio. How are you? Hello, hello. Привет. Did I say it right? <laughs> Привет. Привет. Okay. Yes, it's quite close. And uh, where are you right now? Right now I'm in Portugal. Oh, Portugal. That's quite far away from Novosibirsk. I guess it's seven time zones from here. So it's about 11 o'clock, right? Yeah, it's 11 o'clock on my time. Yeah, Isn't it too days. early for you? No, it's not early. Remember, I'm from Brazil. So in Brazil, we usually wake up like 5 a.m. to go to beach. Uh, because the, so the sun rises like every day for 4.30, 5 a.m. So it's, it's hard to, to stay at bed when you have a beautiful beach to go, to enjoy, to run, and you this kind of thing. So... <laughs> No way. Okay. <laughs> I see. So you are going, going to talk about NoSQL. What was your first experience with NoSQL? Was it cool? As everybody experience with NoSQL is not cool. It's a terrible, it's a huge nightmare. <laughs> 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 Who cares about NoSQL? Come on. <laughs> The whole point was... Uh, I did the, the first mistake that everybody does. Try to use normalization in NoSQL database. Oh. And when you do this kind of mistake, you got a huge failure, a huge bugs in the future, especially when you become big. I see. So how many years ago uh, was your first encounter with NoSQL? Uh, my first experience was with Cassandra, where I helped some university to create a distributed system in Brazil. It was okay. I'm not so old, but let me think the date. I guess seven years ago. Wow. Seven years? It's still uh, quite long ago. And uh, Yeah, but I started younger. I still with 32 years old. You can see my face. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, what do you think? Uh, no, SQL, no SQL versus SQL. What is better? Okay, that's, that's the easy one. The better one is the one who pays your bills. So, you can choose. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mystery about that. So, if SQL will pay your bills, go for it. If no SQL will pay for your bills... Play for it. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Okay. Yes. Everything's around bills, right? So you need to, to pay the energy. You need to pay everything. So my recommendation to you is avoid follow the orb because in three years ago, everybody talks about NoSQL and how amazing it is. But usually they don't mention something about, okay, you need to handle with backup. How to handle backup with the cap theorem? How to hand, uh, handle backup if it, if it dot the mature tool that we, we usually have in SQL database, right? So you need to think, you need to have in mind first your, your business. If it does make sense, you use SQL. If it does make sense, you use NoSQL, go for it. Don't go, don't do the opposite. So I have this tool. I want to use 
this to no matter what. Don't do that. I see. So it's all about business, nothing personal, right? Yes. The whole point is uh, when you go to to a solution, understand first the solution, understand the business, understand why you're looking for it, and then to the tools. Don't never, never, never did the mistake that I have did on my previous time was okay. I have the two. I want you to use the two no matter what. So do the opposite. Okay, I guess it's time for the talk. Please, Otario, let's start. Okay, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Please let me know if you have any questions. I don't know if where I can read this question, but please start to say where you're from. So I guess we have an amazing audience from Russia, where unfortunately I'm not able to speak Russian. So I will try to say a, uh, a couple of words next year. I promise you. But anyway, today let's talk about uh, frameworks, the battle between NoSQL and Java in the cloud arena, because the whole point here is to talk what's going on with Java and NoSQL. Uh, the SQL database has a mature tools like JPA, Spring Data, uh, where you can enjoy, you can use. We, we, we have several layers, several strategies to mapping your application with Active records or just mapping API, and the whole the whole point is okay. NoSQL is become more and more popular, and okay. And I want to use it with Java. How can I make it possible? How how this is possible? That's my goal. And by the way, if you have any question, please interrupt me. It'd be amazing. Uh, but first, I need to introduce myself. So my name is Otavio Santana. My Twitter handle is at Otavio Java. I'm a software engineer. Uh, indeed, I'm just the, the guy who needs to pay the bills and I choose software engineer. So I'm a regular guy who enjoys the software. Uh, I'm a Java champion because I love to help the community. Uh, Usually I say I don't choose Java, Java choose me because the community in Java is so vibrant, it's, it's so amazing, so helpful. Uh, because that, I also help in the Java committee process, the JCP, as executive committee, expert group, and expert group leader. Therefore, if you don't like Java after Java 8, I'm really sorry for you. Sorry, I try my best, so don't complain me. Uh, I try to do my best, so yes. And also, I'm an Apache committer and Eclipse committer and Eclipse product leader. I do a lot of open source, even on my free time. And yes, when I do have free time, I decide to write articles and blog posts about mostly about technology. Therefore, as you can see, I need more friends. Probably I'm alone to do this kind of thing. And then uh, I need to find a new, a new hobby than just write code. So that's just about me. Uh, I also enjoy history. So I know a lot about some Pittsburgh, uh, Peter, the whole history, the whole Russian history. And I know why usually friends don't like to go to Russia in the winter time. Right, so anyway, if you want to talk about this thing, that's my Twitter handle, and in that start, right? So, no SQL database. I received a question about okay, each one should I choose no SQL and SQL? The whole point is, you need to think about the maturity of your product and the maturity of your model. No SQL or uh, SQL has exactly some goal but with different strategies. Therefore, NoSQL has to go to storage information. You can do the queries, so create, retrieve, uh, update and delete information from the database. But in another hand, the strategy is a little bit different. So we have more than one type in NoSQL, like we do have in SQL. We have different strategies to distribute data. For example, we have master slave or primary in a replica. We have the masterless solution. And where we need to think about the cap theorem. For example, if you if you know where about the cap theorem, basically uh, it says the word's not perfect. You, you need 
there is three characters about the distributed data. There is the cap, so C of consistency, A of availability, and P for full tolerance. Yes, I don't know why P if we full tolerance, but anyway, uh, yes, we are good self engineer, but we're not good to write English very well. Uh, where do you usually choose just you? There's no way, at least right now, or maybe some sales people try to convince you, where you can use the three points, three aspects at the same time. So everything has a trade off, and that includes and in the database system, right? And different of, uh, as I mentioned before, NoSQL has different types and different categories. And usually you define NoSQL with the way they store your information in the disk, okay? Let's start with the first one. And the first one is more easy to understand because basically if you are a Java developer, it looks like a, a hash map or a map, or if you are a Python developer, it's a dictionary, or if you are a PHP, it's a dictionary. If you are a Ruby developer, I'm sorry, I have no idea how to represent that in Ruby. I guess it's a tuple. But basically, the whole point here is I have the key, and there is just one way to re retrieve that information, and that's come from the key. And then it will return a huge blob with my value. Okay? So it's exactly the same way that we have we have seen in map. So I have the key and value. Key is the, the way that I return the information. And value is just a blob with the whole information that you want to. Uh, key value has several implementations. So we have Redis, we have Hazelcast, and we have React. Basically does work of the same way so i have the key and value as you can see here that's my sample because i love greece mythology where i have my key apollo and it will return sun Ares, war and aphrodite love and beauty so it doesn't matter what i have inside my value the point is i need to return from the key and then let's move on to column family as you can see here, I have several implementations, several vendors. I have 8Base, SkillaDB, Cassandra, SimpleDB, CloudData, and Dynamo. Yes, there's a huge discussion if Dynamo should be column or, or uh, graph or multi-model. But the whole point is, I have the key, the whole, whole point of column family. I have the key that looks like my key value. Usually, the way that I return the information from that key. However, instead of I have a huge blob that I used to, to, to handle with key value, if you remember, I return the whole information. My information is split in small piece that we call column. Okay, that's why we have column family. Instead of a huge blob, we have a small piece of each information in column. The column has basically two information. One is the column name and the second is the information itself. For example, here I have Apollo where I have dirty and sun, just one column. Aphrodite, dirty, love and happiness with the color of pink. Aries, the war. And Kratos, ah uh, yeah, I kind of enjoy video games. Uh, Kratos, who has two columns, death cards, and a weapon, the sword. And as you can see here, there is no defined standard to column family like we usually do with relational database, right? Because in relational database, the, the information, the columns there, if or if without the information, however, the value will be null. Here, no. The information, the column will just appear when you have the information. For example, here, just Kratos has death cards. If you think about a relational database, everybody must have the death card, however, with zero or new information. Okay? That's the whole point of the column family. As I mentioned before, we have several implementations. And let's move on to the third type. There's a document. 
Again, we have several implementations. We have several vendors here. So I have Apache, CouchDB, I have MongoDB, and Couchbase. This structure looks like a XML file or a JSON file. This one is more powerful to, to search. I, I show to you later. Uh, and we also have a small piece that we call documents. Okay, so the document has two information that looks like the column. So I have the key and the value. For example, here, my first document is this one here, where I can see my mouse. The key is name and the value is Diana. The key is dirty. The, the value is an array of occupation of Diana. And the siblings, as you can see, I have a concept or approach of subdocuments. What does mean subdocuments? It's a document inside another document. So it's a recursive document. You can think of it that way. Instead of key value in column, you can search the, the, the information to more than the key. So if you want to find that is, that's okay. If you want to find by siblings, it's okay. You can also do something like that. The whole point is, it's more powerful to search. And the last one is a graph, at least for now, as a standard that we're looking for. Yes, we have more NoSQL database types. However, this does issue young, for example, time series. And I will just cover this does for where I have four several implementations, the Neo4G, for example, InfoGrid, Sun, Hypergraph, and yes, do you know what is more amazing about Graph? It's more powerful in relationship than the relational database. Wow, think about it. As you can see here, I have three nodes or vertex where I have relationship. And instead of a uh, relational database, I have one object to hold several information like the properties and also the direction of the relationship. Okay, for example here, uh, Apollo, Ares, and Kratos are my vertex. And I also have my edge to make sure I have the relationship. For example here, Kratos killed Apollo, Kratos killed Ares. So one direction relationship. And I have a diff on the different direction, I have different meanings. For example, Apollo was killed by Kratos or Ares was killed by Kratos. In this point, the direction means something to you. Also, I can put properties on that relationship. For example, Kratos killed Ares with your bare hands. Now I get it was by swords in the first but anyway, I guess it was worth. But I'm, I'm sure that Kratos kill Apollo with the, your bare hands when in Good of War 3. The whole point is in my relationship, I can put several properties in also directions. And we also have several implementations here, as you can see. Right now, yes, there are more types. For example, there is multi-model type that basically is when a NoSQL has more has support to more than one NoSQL type. For example, uh, a wrongdb. A wrongdb is a NoSQL database who has more than one type of support. So if you go to this website right now, you can see a wrongdb who has support to key value, to document, and also to, to graph. So that's the approach of graph uh, multi-model type. Another thing that I forget to mention about the NoSQL types is uh, when the order that I put is more powerful to read and search. For example, the key value, I just able to find by key. The column family, almost the same. However, I can choose each information I will return, for example, I, I want you to return just as dirty of Aphrodite. That is possible. And that is not possible to key value. I need to return always the whole information. Okay? The document is powerful 
to return information you can do query to more than the key so by name it there is sibling or something like that it depends of no sql database you can aggregate your information like sun every something like you we usually do with sql and the graph database you have a powerful search engine even more powerful than the relational database itself because it has an object to just hold the relationship and that's great to for example recommendation because direction matters when you do recommendation right for example just because i know some famous people it does not mean that famous people know me for example i'm brazilian and i know who is neymar but there's no truth that no neymar knows me right so direction matters and this makes sense to make relationship, to make recommendation, and so on. So it's a powerful engine. Okay, after explaining about what is NoSQL, my next step is to, to talk about the challenge that we have in NoSQL database right now. The big issue right now is because we have over 2,000, 2000 NoSQL database. And this uh number is growing up like every day because every day everybody decides to do two things the first one is to create a new javascript library and the second one is to create a new nosql database and you have more categories as i mentioned before i just mentioned four uh key value graph document and column family and multi model five However, there are more coming, for example, time series and so on. So the huge challenge right now is to handle with that. And yes, as Java developer, we want to do that with Java, right? And that's the huge challenge right now, because when you talk about NoSQL and Java, we need to think about the different categories that we have to do, to have to handle. Uh, to explain and to the framework, I need to explain a little bit about the category that we have too. So we have the driver, I will explain to you later. Object mapper, a specific and agnostic. So those are the four categories that I explain to you right now. The first one is driver. Basically driver is almost the same that if you are familiar with JDBC, is to no SQL database. The whole point is, I have a low level communication between Java and my NoSQL database. The, the, the good points are you have your full power. You have your flexibility because you can handle the structure exactly the same that you usually to handle with uh, a NoSQL database. The semantics you be close to the, the database itself. However, in the real life, that is no cool, right? Because usually you need to model application related to the business. So that's why we as Java developer, we are supposed to use or object oriented in our solution. So the low level is not good. Sometimes it's not possible to move. For example, I'm using the driver of Cassandra. I'm not able to move to uh, the driver of MongoDB, for example even when both are the same type. So I'm using MongoDB, who is document, and I want to move to CloudBase, who is also document. I'm not able to port my code to anything else. And to each database, I need to learn uh, the features, the specific features. And yes, it's an issue with the learning curve. And yes, the boilerplate, because usually you need to handle with business. so. You have your NT, you need to convert to this, this low level and then return this low level to, uh, to your object. This is a sample here, as you can see, the MongoDB sample, the MongoDB driver. What I want to do here is basically I create my client with settings where I can define my configurations. I have, I, based on that, I create my MongoDB database as you can see here and then i return my collection so collection you can think about 
table to MongoDB. I create one document, if you remember, it's a small piece, where I insert my uh, document inside my collection. Okay, so basically, again, database is almost the same as SQL. Collection is a table. And based on that table, I create an entity where I will insert information in my entity table. And one important thing that I forgot to say, MongoDB is a schemeless database. Therefore, I don't need to create the table for a use. So in this case here, if I don't have the database test, it will create on real time. If you don't have a collection, it will create. If you don't have the the name document, it's no it's not it's not a big deal. You can use as schemeless as you wish. Okay. Those are some sample. Neo4j from Java, where you can take a look. Data strike Java driver to Cassandra. J Redis to Redis. In Java Mongo driver, um, let me think to where, yes, to MongoDB, is not to MongoDB. Uh, so I mentioned you the driver, and I mentioned uh, a big issue with the boilerplate that I need to do to go to or from uh, NoSQL database. One way to solve that for sure is to use Object Mapper. Why did I put uh, OXM? Because we, we have the Object Relational Mapper, ORM, and we have also Object Graph Mapper, Object Document Mapper, Object Column Mapper. So usually you can put OXM, that means you will convert object to the entity model. It does, does matter what, so that's why I put an X here. So you can use your imagination to think about graph, document, column, key value, and so on. So the good points are it reduces the boilerplate. So instead of you do with your by hand, you can use your these tools to reduce that. The domain, so you can model your application close to uh, to your domain. That's matter. Usually, you can reduce the, the learning curve. You can learn faster this way. However, you need to think about it because usually when you go to this way, it's a it's, it's, it might be a nightmare feature because we have the paradigm impedance. And what does that mean? Basically, sometimes, uh, just because you want to do on, on your object and the object mapper has support to that, it does not mean that's the right way to do. It's the right way to follow. For example, uh, object, you can extend objects between an object. For example, I have my person and I want to extend in my workers because worker is also a person. So I can create a, a worker class where it will extend my person class. And that's usually fine to OOP. However, you need to think twice when you try to do this kind of emulation in NoSQL database. I'm not saying that's not possible yet, you can do, but it depends on the solution that you're gonna propose. Uh, emulation, that usually is the biggest mistake when you decide to go to NoSQL. Usually, okay, I want to go to NoSQL, I want to. Uh, Think exactly the same way that I think when I use relational database. Usually that's a nightmare because you're not able to do relationship. There's no inner join, left join, usually. And the metadata. If you are familiar with the new frameworks, you can see that they are moving outside reflection, right? So Quarkus, Micronauts, why do I have that? Because uh, reflection, because uh, a significant time to read uh, the annotation and it usually happen on real time so uh, the metadata is an issue about performance uh, it's important why right because once you put annotation you want to move one way to another way 
However, it's a is an issue. So that's why we have a new new frameworks coming. Okay. So basically, I did. I we have the driver, the communication low la la layer level, object mapper. That's more JPA like, where you have the the way to the conversation between your object and the model. And let's go to the last few ways. The specific model. So this framework is specific by vendor. The highlight here is okay. It's new ver new feature in near 4 j is coming. Probably the first uh, the first mapper that we release that you be the specific feature or a specific driver, a specific mapper. Usually that is more light wave. However, you have the issues because it's a vendor locking. So every time that you want to choose between database, you need to choose the whole annotation, the whole everything, the whole communication and so on. And yes, this uh, the specific sample. So if you want to go to Google, you can looking for data stacks mapper to uh, Cassandra, a specific mapper. If you go to Neo4j OGM, as I mentioned before, right? So OXM, so object whatever mapper. In this case, the OGM object graph mapper to Neo4j. And Morphia is a framework to to MongoDB. And besides the specific, we also have the agnostic. The advantage of that is you can reuse one familiar API. It's more easy, it's easier to enable the polyglot persistence. However, it's, it is an overpromise to do that. It's sometimes not possible because in NoSQL, we have a huge uh, diversity around uh, NoSQL. As I mentioned before, we have like over 200 NoSQL database. And what much matter, much matters to NoSQL database, it is because each NoSQL database has specific features and particular behavior that matter to us. For example, when you want to use Cassandra, you probably want to use Cassandra query language, so CQL. When you, you, you are using uh, a large search that is a NoSQL database, for sure, you probably want to use a uh, search engine. Okay? The whole point is, uh, with one uh, agnostic API, sometimes you're not able to use that. You can do like a hybrid solution where you, can, where you have a familiar API with a specific AP, uh, implementation like Spring Data does, but that's the point. In the cause of feature is because usually it, it, it's not faster than a specific uh, mapper, for example. Okay, right now I, I, I tell to you the categories of NoSQL database, the mapper, uh, the communication layer, where there is two layer, there are two types. Also, if these tools will be so specific, where I able to first I need to go to vendor locking or agnostic, where I'm not able to choose. Uh, I able to choose between those two databases. However, it's more hard or delay a little bit more time to take a specific feature from those two database. Let, uh, right now, let's go to the platforms where it has support to NoSQL database. Okay, uh, what let's show here is okay. Let's move this high here one second. I don't need you here. Sorry, my dog. Uh, I have Spring, I have Quarkus, I have Hibernate OGM, I have Micronaut, and I have GenoSQL. Basically, what those have in common? Both have support to dependency injection. Okay, so you can use any kind of inject engine you, you, that you want to. Those are agnostic, so you can choose or can replace easily between NoSQL database as you want. And they usually are familiar with this nomenclature here, 
So there's a mapping as well. And they usually have the template in the repository. Template is more one interface API where you can do basic operation. And the repository is one thing that we as Java developers love a lot. That is the option to, okay, I create an interface. I put some method by query. I don't need to care about the implementation. And the framework itself will implement that to me. So thus is a perfect to uh, the perfect word to us to use this kind of platform. So and yes, they are using also the configuration following the, the 12 factor application. Mostly the third one that is about configuration where you don't need to finally put the, the user and the password directly in your code. You don't need to use XML somewhere. You can put any kind of configuration, for example, in the properties, and then you can override these properties by environments. Therefore, if, for example, okay, I want to create my local whole local environments in my properties, for example, I want to put my in my properties uh, some local host environments, no credentials, and blah 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 blah. And on production, I want to, I don't want to, the developer know, even know about this configuration, the credentials, for example, user, password, stuff like that. And that's the whole point. So in the real world, you as a developer must not need to know about the user and the password. Okay. And that is the whole point of the platform. So again, dependency injection template, that's a low-level API to mapper, repository, that's an interface that you extend some repository class, repository interface, where the framework gonna handle everything to you. And the last one is configuration, where you don't need to put your password user inside your source code. Let's start to the first one. So our Hibernate OGM. So it's a, the whole point here is, okay, I have the my, operation with my JPA like. So that's amazing because you can use JPA that you as a developer probably are familiar with. We have the GPQL. And if you want to, you are able to do full text queries using hibernate search if you want to. So basically the whole point is, okay, the developer are familiar with JPA. Let's try to use the same API to NoSQL database. The whole point here is, yeah, yes, as I mentioned before, those points, right? So the dependency injection you can do by CDI. The template is my empty repository through JPA. I don't have access to repository. And unfortunately, I don't have access to my third factor configuration. So we need to you need to have a, a persistent XML somewhere, you know, able to override this configuration by environments. And the metadata in general is by reflection. Okay. The configuration is looks like the JPA, right? So uh, if you're familiar with JPA, so I put my properties, I put the, the provider, MongoDB, as you can see here, the database, and I put the creation of database. I put my, my provider, as you can see here. And that is it. So it's the API of JPA. So NT, using Javax persistence, right now Jakarta. ID, generated value, generate, generic generator, something like that, by ID. And as you can see here, I have my relationship, many to one, right? And you can think about, wait, MongoDB does not have access to relationship. How are they able to do that? That's why I explained to you, usually you have some mistake because the idea of using the same API is good. However, those are different a, a proposal. Uh, to me, Hibernate OGM is, is a good idea, was a good initiative. However, try to to use a fork as a knife, usually it's not good, it's, it's, uh, it's not good enough, right? So as you can see here, my sample code here, of several philosophers, I have Socrates here, where I have my NT manager factory, I create my MongoDB, NT manager factory, 
then I will return my entity manager and wait. I will use transaction here. I will begin with transaction and then I will persist and then I will commit and then close my connection. First, yes, right now uh, from MongoDB 4, we have a transaction. However, if you go to the documentation, it says in a simple word, if you are using that too much, does that mean you need to reread re the whole goddamn uh, documentation? Because this normalization is your friend. So you need to go, you as a user, a developer, need to go to this normalization. If you're using too much transaction, you you got some several performance issue on the application. Okay? That was the first one. And let's go to the second one. Quarkus. So it's a CDA like, so it's not CDI because it, it does not run on CDI on the TCK, but it's a kind of it has active records, so it's more easy to use. And yes, we have the option to repository. So let's go to the code. So my dependence injection is Quarkus DI, so it's a CDI like. My template is basic activity record. So the whole point here is I have my class, my entity class, where I will extend some activity record class. And my entity will have the whole option to do operations if I want to. If I don't, I have my repository approach. Yes, finally, right now we have the configuration, uh, the third factor of the application with Eclipse Microprofile configuration. And instead of reflection, Quarkus avoid that to make a faster startup with several Quarkus extension. And everything will happen on build time or compilation time, whatever you want. So the whole point is, usually Quarkus does not work with uh, reflection. Let's take a look in the sample code to, to you see. So as I mentioned before, one way to go is by uh, Active Records, where I have my philosopher class that extends Panache MongoDB NT. I have two attributes, so the name and the codes. And yes, you have the option to create several, several methods, static if you want to. For example here, I have my find by name, where I do the find name and then find the result. And if you want to, you, you uh, Quarkus also they have the option to repositories. That's the exact same thing, they find by name, but this time with uh, interface. Okay. And these are the simple code here. So I have my philosopher, design Aristotle. And with active records, I just need to use them, these methods. So persistent, update or delete. If you don't want to use active record, don't worry. Quarkus also have the option to do the with repository. So repository with persist, update and delete. Okay, let's go to Micronaut. To me, the, the highlight of Micronaut is its efficient compiler type dependency injection. So I never saw something more efficient than before. And also it has Micronaut data. So let's take a look. So dependency injection with Micronaut is with Micronaut IOC, inversion of control. We have the option to active record, uh, configuration by Micronaut configuration. And the metadata avoid a reflection as well, like Quarkus does, using Java notation processing. Uh, as you can see here, we have the introspected philosopher again with the name and the codes. But right now, I we have the template. So philosopher service with the Mongo client, where you can do several operations. In this case. Is exact some method that I want to so find by name where I create a filter and then return my philosopher. And yes, yeah, I have as much option that you want to. For example, philosopher, uh, find all, find person, whatever you want. 
but remember you need to do that manually so what is the get collection so I do I did my get database and then get my collection people with the person class everything gonna happen uh, on uh, computer time and compilation time of, instead of reflection and let's go to the to me at least the most mature framework when you talk about NoSQL database that is Spring. Spring has Spring data to me as I mentioned before is a more mature uh, experience with NoSQL database so far and also it has several features that, is, that are amazing. Uh, let's go deep so the dependency injection with Spring is Spring IOC uh, when, once you talk about mostly MongoDB, we need to think about the Mongo template to use this kind of template operations. The repository, we have several interfaces, for example, the paging and sorting repository. The configuration, Spring also has support to, that is Spring configuration. And the metadata is by reflection. So you, basically, what does metadata mean on this table? You as a developer put a notation and a framework needs to read somehow. So this time it will use real-time reflection. Okay, just to make sure that you understood this point. Again, okay, let's take the philosopher uh, anti model. So I have my philosopher class where I put the document annotation, the ID, and a couple of getters and setters like we love to do with Java. Based on that, I have the two options I mentioned before, template or repository. I use a different one. I use Mongo repository, Mongo repository, where I don't need to handle anything else. So if I want to put, for example, find by name, that's almost the same that everybody is as, as a kind of standard. You don't need to do the next step. So Plato is the, the Spring Data developer. I create this class and then I can, with MongoDB, insert and update. As you can see here, a repository in Spring follows the DDD approach. So if you compare between, uh, let's return here, between Quarkus, where the repository has versus update delete, MongoDB has a save. The whole point here is, okay, it will check if the information is there, if it, if it is there it will update, if not, it will insert. So it has a better abstraction to you as a developer. You don't need to handle that, and it follows the best approach of DDD, at least in my perspective. We have the delete, we have the find one, and the whole point is the repository here is more powerful, at least on my perspective and my point of view. Okay, that is the comparison between the NoSQL database. What I tell to you right now is we have a huge amount of options. But what's going on with NoSQL? Why you don't have standards or NoSQL database? There's an article from uh, InfoWord. It say, okay, the time for NoSQL database is now. However, as you can see, it was more than almost 10 years ago. So the whole point, the highlight of this article is, is the advantage of relational database is a standard. Why we have a huge adoption in SQL database. And if you want to make the NoSQL data bigger, you must have exactly something. Okay? Uh, Oracle tried to do that in the Java world as well. So they, they proposed that in Java 1, when we had Java 1, so right now it's Oracle code. Okay. Uh, I mean, we don't have any kind of conference right now, but when you had, it's Oracle code. In 2016, where we have the enterprise solution to NoSQL in Java EE, right? The whole point is, uh, it will have several APIs to different NoSQL categories. So as you can see here, we have uh, NoSQL categories APIs, column, document, key value, and graph. And 
specific behavior to Cassandra H base, MongoDB, Couch base, and so on. There was a solution to Java, to Java E, Java Enterprise, and also to Graph, we have one solution as well. We have the Apache Tinkerpop. You can think the Tinkerpop as JDBC to Graph, okay? Uh, it has a common language to several NoSQL database, that's a Gremlin. And the highlight of the, this solution here, it has support to over 30 graph database. The whole point is, okay, I'm using Neo4j. Okay, you can use with Apache Tinkerpop. I want to replace to another graph database, I don't know, perhaps a wrongdb. Okay, you just need to, to, to replace the driver. Anything else, you'll be the same. You don't need to learn new things. You don't need to learn new features. So that is how the structure in Apache Tinkerpop works. So, uh, for example, here, I want to look for the friends, the Grammarly friends, friends. So G is a graph. So give the 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 the, the vertex that has the name Grammarly, where knows somebody something and know somebody something and show me the name so that's the whole point so uh, the Grammarly has the way to you do search with text however it has support to fluent api as well also you we are able to navigate through the hierarchy with Grammarly. for example gif or graph has name Grammarly. Repeat and manage until I find the CEO, so I can navigate like a full uh, full chain, for example, and then show me the, the path. And the graph is a powerful way, right? So, uh, a part thinking part was was is one solution to NoSQL database, however, specifically to graph. That is this initiative that is open cipher. You can think about okay, this uh. It has support to SQL in a graph database, and also it has a GQL, that basically it's a graph query language. Basically, it was is inspired by Neo4j, and right now it has support to over 10 graph databases. That includes the support to Gremly, the Tinkerpop. Therefore, if you think about it, if Gremly has 30 support, 30 database and OpenCypher has 10 plus Grimly. Open OpenCypher probably has more database than OpenCypher, but I'm not sure because uh, Grimly there's several implementation common, for example, Neo4j. This one is a sample of OpenCypher. It's basically query. As you can see here, so it's like a SQL, and if you handle anything else, it's, it's it's a little bit different from Tinkerpop, where we have several uh, SDK, uh, SDK to Java, SDK to Python, P to PHP, and so on. Okay, and right now, I mean that's no so young, but right now the Jakarta E words, the new Java E branding, is look to a new solution to database standard to NoSQL database. Jakarta e spec, Jakarta NoSQL, it's mostly what, what they decided, they tried to do in 2016. Uh, we have the mapping layers and the communication layers, okay? And we have one API to each NoSQL database. So one to column, column family, key value, document, and graph. And in the graph, Instead of create a new one, it's using Apache Tinkerpop because it's the standard that we have right now. And when you put this guy in the in the table to compare, the dependency injection is based on CDI. Templates, we have several templates on Jakarta NoSQL, GenoSQL. Repository as well, the third fact, factor application is based on micro, micro profile configuration. And it's a 
is, is the metadata how the framework reads your information is based on refraction. However, there's one working uh, annotation process processor job. Okay. Oops. Go forward, no back. As you can see here, it's the API is almost as possible, close as possible to JPA. So NT to define an NT ID to define an ID column to define a column. Because this approach is agnostic, uh, it's used repository that's close to Spring data. Uh, NT, as I mentioned before, it has several templates. For example, here I have my philosopher Thales Miletus. It's a MongoDB template where I can insert and update. And I have my repository that looks like the Spring one, so save. Uh, delete and find by ID. Uh, I have a couple minutes, so if you have any question, please let me know. I will share some links because I'm not sure if I have enough time to show uh, the demo stuff. But what I'd like to show to you is uh, this sample code here. Let's see how can I share this. Where can I share this this sample code here? Uh, where is the chat here? Okay, I guess something like this. Oh, the chat is stable. By the way, if you go to GitHub uh, slash GenoSQL slash NoSQL in the game, you are able to see several samples with NoSQL database. So, for example, here, uh, no, 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 this one here, so in the game parent, you are able to see several solutions where you are able to compare. The whole point that I want to say to show it to you is okay. Uh, I want to use Jakarta, so we can take a look in the sample with Cass uh, Jakarta with Cassandra, Graph, and the Bay with Genos, New for J, New for the standalone has a cast, MongoDB Redis. Uh, first, I don't have enough time to show more, but they, we have the same way to Spring. And here as well, we have a new repository where I went deep to just Cassandra. So as you can see here, I have my data stacks driver API, the communication layer. There, unfortunately, I don't have time to show more. But my whole point here is how verbose it could be, because I need to create my, my insert query to create an entity. And then I need to create my query manually. And then I will return this query manually. Okay, uh, that's my driver, and that is my whole my whole point against the driver. So we need to do everything manually, and sometimes it's not cool. And that's why we have the mappers. So we can take a look in the the specific mapper that I mentioned to you before. For example, the data stacks mapper that is specific, where I have my inventory mapper built. Where I created my book down. So I have my entity of book, as I mentioned. Uh, here it has several annotations, and as you can see, that's specific from the stacks, therefore, it will work only with Cassandra. Okay. I have my interface, uh, this looks almost the same of Spring Data, any kind of repository. And then I can do my, my operations. Okay. I can create and then the, the so I showed to you a specific uh, driver mapper and then a specific uh, mapper. And let's go to uh, agnostic one like Spring Data. So let's show here. My entity here is again book. Uh, as you can see, it's use book uh, annotation from MongoDB. And as another good point, so in theory, uh, with the exception of this specific annotation, you are able to, to change easily to another NoSQL database. Otavio, I guess we are out of time. Uh, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but I guess you are almost there. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, you can actually continue this demo in the discussion zone if anybody interested. And uh, we need to. Uh, uh, stop now and uh, we'll see you uh, in 
30 minutes and next talk will be by Victor Gamov. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. That was a pleasure. See you there.